Hi, welcome back. It's Michal again, and this time I'm going to show you how to configure your S7-1200 or S7-1500 to talk to your SQL database. Okay, so we are back in our VM. Let's fire up Chrome and go to the support side and download the SQL library. There you go, there's an application example called connecting an S7-1500 to an SQL database. This is exactly what we need. So it comprises of documentation and the project. Uh, the PDF will tell us exactly how to use the blocks in the project and the project should be just a project ready to use. Nice, the project is now downloaded. Let's go to the downloads folder. Let's extract our project and let's open it in TIA. So I already had TIA running. I usually have TIA running. Uh, let's close it for now. This is gonna fire up as a fresh new instance. There we go, TIA opening project for us now. Let's see what's in the project. Okay, so in our project, we already have an SQL PLC. This is the name of the PLC. It's a 1511. Uh, what I have on my desk, here actually, is a 1511F. So I'm going to right click, change device, and select the 1511F. So a fails with variant. 1511F, the latest and greatest, on the latest firmware as well. Now, all these things that I'm going to be showing you, I'm going to be using an S7-1500 for it. But if you go back here, and read the documentation, it actually tells us, somewhere here, it tells us that the same blocks, the same example can be used with an S7-1200 uh, if we do not use archiving and we comment out a line. And later on, I will show you exactly where this line is, how to find it and how to adapt this project for 1200 as well, just so that you know. Okay, so we have a 1511F now with the latest firmware. I'm going to make sure that the um, Profinet configuration is the same as the config of my PLC. So my PLC sits on uh, 0.11, uh, the PLC name, that's fine, I don't mind. Let's see what's inside the code. So you get program blocks, uh, we have main, archive, SQL config, and we have the library, the LSQL library here. So in main, we have a block, I would imagine yeah, from this library, and this block uses write data and write password internally as well. We are not really that interested in what the block does inside, as long as it works. Uh, but again, the nice thing with the recent application examples is they are not know how protected. So we can actually go in uh, and see the code inside. You know, maybe this block is missing some functionality that you would like to add. So because it is not know how protected, uh, you could go in here and, and change the functionality. Okay, so as you can see, the block is already tagged up for us, uh, and it's using an interface DB that's called SQL Config. That's just a global DB. Uh, if you are you know, creating your project or you have your project in which you'd like to integrate this library, uh, you could fire up another instance of TIA, just drag and drop this project, and create your, your own interface block, or maybe you already have an interface block. So if we look at the interface block itself, Uh, it's using some UDTs, so UDT type login information and type diagnostics. Uh, these UDTs can be found here in the project. So again, if you want to take this uh, and use it in your project, make sure you also copy the UDTs, uh, not just the blocks themselves. So as I said, the block is already tagged up. Uh, enable is just a boolean. Uh, then we have connection settings. The connection settings, uh, this will be a bit like in the MQTT videos, they will need exactly the same level of information. So, Hardware ID, uh, again, where can we find the Hardware ID? If you go to Device and Networks, we click on the Profinet port, go Properties and System Constants, you can find the Hardware ID of your Profinet interface here. So I'm using Profinet interface 1, that's the only one that I have with my um, 1511, and the Hardware ID of this is 64. Another place where you can find the Hardware ID is if you go PLC Tags, show all tags, and to go system constants. Then you can scroll down, 
uh, and find your, there it is, local Procnet interface 1, hardware ID 64. Yeah, same, same value. So if I now go back to my interface DB, uh, well, as you can see, my, my hardware ID is already set to 64. So this is okay, I don't need to change it. Uh, next thing, next thing is my um, connection ID. So this needs to be a unique ID for the open user uh, communication. So by default, we have programmed this, selected 10. If you are already using uh, 10 in hex, you might just change it to 15 or anything like this, so that it is a unique ID. Connection type 0B stands for 11, uh, so it's a TCP IP, that's fine. Uh, active connection establishment, that's what we want. Remote address. So this is where we need to uh, type in the address of our uh, SQL database. If you watch my previous video on how to set up SQL Express, at the VM that the MySQL Express is running is on 013. And I am using the default port for SQL comms of 1433. Then I have a login information. So this is where I need to define uh, some extra things. On the right hand side here, you can see which ones are optional, which ones are mandatory. So host name is optional, uh, mandatory username. Yeah. So again, if you watch my previous video, we set the username to be SQL underscore S71500. Uh, the password is, is my top secret password. I love Sematic. The app name, uh, this is just optional. This is the the name of, of let's say, your S71500 connection to the database itself. Then we have the server name. So for the server name, I think we should be perfectly fine if we just put it as this. So this is the name of my uh, SQL instance, actually. Uh, library name, local, optional, optional, not interested. Database to read or write from. So again, when we were setting up it up with SQL Express, we added ourselves a new database and called it S71500. Uh, SQL DB, so this is uh, fine as well. Then we have some more optional fields, that's all good. The next things are command, so the SQL command that I actually want to send to my database uh, and then execute a uh, boolean. So the rest shouldn't be really that important. Theoretically, you know, having just these should be fine for me and should allow me to establish comps to my uh, SQL database. Well, let's see if it does. Select my PLC and download the device. Okay, so we found our 1511F. That's all good on 0111. Uh, Let's load it. Ah, password must not be empty. Yeah, so by default, most of the application examples, they come with this preselected, full access, no protection. And this means that you need to define the password for a fail-safe um, uh, for fail-safe CPU. If you wanted to make changes to the fail-safe, then this password would be needed. I'm just going to flip this to the, uh, well, basically no protection. I do not recommend this for um, production setups. For production setups, I would actually uh, recommend setting this to no access and setting all these passwords for different levels of access so that your CPU is actually uh, protected from overwriting. Okay, so we change this now. Uh, let's just rebuild all. This will ensure uh, full consistency of the project. So we won't have any surprises when we start downloading and it tells us that the safety is not consistent, for example. Although in our case, there is no safety. So we should still be fine. Continue without synchronization. Load. This will take a moment. Okay, download it, start the module. Uh, and let's see what happens, you know, let's go online, let's close this window, and um, let's put the glasses here as well. Yeah, all good. Okay, so let's now try to establish the connection to our SQL database. Valid through means that the settings seem to be valid, basically means that the block is doing something. 7002 means that it did send initial queries and it's trying to um, to connect to your server. If something goes wrong, this will change to 8602, for example. But if it stays at 7002, it means it's all good. If it does change to something else, uh, just go here in Diagnostics and check 
uh, what is the error of sub function. Um, and then just uh, go to the help of TI and look for T -cong block. Okay, so you go, for example, for a T and C or a T -cong itself. Uh, you scroll down, you find the code here, and this will tell you why it can't establish the connection. And it should be all good, as you can see. Uh, it's still at 7002, which means it's good. Now, if you remember our database to which we are connected with the management studio, just to go through the process, connect here, yeah, SQL Express. I'm going to be using different account here. My top secret password. We have our database. And in the database, we have a table called uh, PLC data with columns flow, pressure, and temperature. So now what I'm going to try to do, I'm going to try to insert uh, some values here from the PLC. But first, let's just make sure, yeah, the table is empty. So we can go back to our block. And by default, in this project, we already have a command inserted here that says insert into PLC data values 5, 6, uh, 7. The only difference is, I guess, that ours uh, is called, let me change this, PLC data. But I will still insert the same values in 5, 6, 7. It should insert them into subsequent uh, columns, so 5 into flow, 6 into pressure, uh, 7 into temperature. So now let's try to flip the execute SQL command. SQL command got sent. Let's see if it updated here. So again, uh, we'll now rerun this command, press F5, and there you go, 567 in your SQL database. And this is exactly how you can establish communication and send data from your S7-1200 or 1500 to the uh, SQL database. Uh, I did mention that I will show you how to do it with S7-1200, didn't I? Uh, so, if you wanted to use these blocks with S7-1200, uh, we'd need to follow the manual and comment out program line 386 of LN, uh, LSQL Microsoft. So this will be here, and you would then go to line 386, where is it, 386, this. So basically, um, 1500 won't support this command, this one we, we wouldn't be able to use this block with 1200. If we comment out this and don't use the enable archive or even, you know, delete the entire enable archive as well, at this entire region, uh, we should be perfectly fine and this block would work with S7-1200. Again, if you haven't seen the video on how to uh, set up the SQL Express itself and you don't have SQL Express yet, not sure how to set it up, please go uh, check our other video that will tell you exactly how to set up SQL Express for communication with S7-1200 or S7-1500 CPU. Thanks and speak to you soon. Bye.